And uh, now from R Street Institute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. In response to the threats brought up by the delegate from Mozambique and others regarding breaches of personal privacy and an overall lack of accountability and recourse, we would like to discuss the larger problem that this issue points to, which is a lack of data sharing as a factor contributing to an overall threatening cyber environment. More specifically, we'd like to discuss cross-border data sharing and by extension, restrictive data localization practices. With an increasingly interconnected ICT global community comes a massive amount of valuable data about human activity. As a result, there's a desire by companies to move data freely across borders to facilitate economic and social activity and a similar desire by governments to protect it for their purposes. This brings us to a sort of finer point of the global data regulation debate and one on which we believe it's possible to achieve a majority consensus, data localization and cross-border data data transfers. Regardless of the desires of various equities involved in this discussion about fluidity of and access to data, one principle remains true. Internet commerce and communication thrive on the free flow of information and open sharing of data. Digital borders will only serve to harm the global economy, breed mistrust among various equities, and further insecurity in an already insecure cyber environment. Increasingly, states have begun implementing data localization laws that require all data generated within the country to be physically stored there. These blanket data localization practices, in our view, are simply a second iteration of internet border controls, the first being censorship. The international community has condemned unjustified restrictions on the flow of information into a country in the form of censorship, and it must now condemn unjustified restriction on the flow of information out of the country in the form of unjustified data localization. While we recognize that restricting some forms of sensitive data may be necessary to ensure personal privacy or national security, we similarly argue that unjustified restriction of data transfers must be disallowed in a future global ICT agreement. We understand the desire for member states to keep the value of its data within its borders to avoid intellectual property theft or other harmful action, restrict foreign suppliers from infiltrating a delicate domestic market, or readily access useful information. However, we believe these reasons do not comport with the purpose of the UN to overall maintain peace and security, or with what we see as the chief function of the internet to facilitate free and open global communications. We believe the OEWG must recognize that there are illegitimate purposes for restricting the free flow of data. Economic protectionism, in our view, is one such illegitimate reason. We fear that many states may express legitimate reasons for localizing data as a shield for truly illegitimate purposes. And we therefore implore that as member states consider, uh, consider their options throughout these few days, uh, that they define what they consider to be legitimate and strongly condemn actions outside of that issued guidance. As for legitimate purposes, we would encourage member states to consider that data is not safe solely because it's stored within their borders. If a government is concerned uh, with what we would call a justified event, like a law enforcement's need to access data or access to data relevant to a cyber incident, or as the delegate from Mozambique mentioned, a general mishandling of personal private data, then we would encourage member states to consider, when appropriate, retaining supervisory access over that data and to require a copy to potentially be stored domestically, but not to restrict cross-border data transfers altogether. And while these policies remain our recommendations for best practices, we recognize and affirm each member state's right to sovereignty, of course, and concede that not every member state will agree to such limited data localization practices, Therefore, in light of that reality, we would recommend that for states who are unwilling or unable to abide, abide by this norm, to utilize bilateral, multilateral treaties. Of course, even treaties may not be enough to ensure that each country is willing to lift data localization practices, uh, or excuse me, restrictions to the degree necessary to facilitate free and open data sharing practices. In that instance, um, in which an agreement cannot be met, such as with companies refusing to allow host states to retain data from another country's data subjects, that um, we would utilize encryption and similar cipher technology uh, to secure the data but still respect and abide by the country's localization laws. Uh, as we discuss facilitating data transfers, it's important to acknowledge that not all recipients will be equipped with the cybersecurity and privacy standards necessary. Uh, in these cases, our organization has looked to the European Union's GDPR, Articles 45 through 49, 
uh, for guidance, and we highly recommend that member states do the same and consider adopting a global version of this. Overall, data is valuable, and we, we recognize that, and protecting it is necessary. Uh, however, there are remedies that exist that do not unduly restrict the free and peaceful flow of data across borders. And we would argue that erecting digital borders will only weaken the global economy and strongly urge each member state to consider this proposal as an alternative to data localization and restrictive data access laws. Thank you, Chairman.